Oh my god, this thing's fast. And we will entirely get rid of the main engine and literally just let the solid fuel boosters carry us up because Jesus Christ, are we already going fast. Alright everybody, hello and welcome back to another episode on Kerbal Space Program with me, Spacefish. And welcome back to beautiful Kerbal Space Center, where we do now have all our Kerbal Nords safely back home after a very, very toasty ride back the last time around when it transpired that the Kerbal Engineers had, in their hurry of building their spacecraft, forgot to slap on some heat shields and somehow we made it back regardless. Botched KSP's physics, I guess, but we're all here. We're all alive, the last mission is complete, and we've got all Kerbal Nought still in one piece, and everything recovered, luckily. So, very new good news on that end, and uh, we're going to today already look towards the next mission then, more specifically the next storyline mission, which, let's see where that takes us. I'm, I'm hoping for something cool, you know, maybe like Minmus for once or something. We shall see, and then we will go and outfit a craft for that specific mission and get our Kerbal Nords on their merry way. So it should be quite fun today, hopefully, but just quickly before we get started on that very thing, if you're new around here and if you do happen to enjoy this very episode, please make sure to go ahead and smash that subscribe button right down below. That will really, really help out a ton. We're trying to reach 1k subscribers currently and every single person counts. So thank you so much if you did that. And without further ado, let us go and hop right on into Mission Control, where we should be able to see a new mission. It seems to be this one. Why, that one is a bit boring, isn't it? Apparently, we're supposed to explore Kerbin. I was really hoping for something else. I was really, really hoping that, you know, we can get to Minmus or something. Apparently, we're supposed to explore Kerbin. A crew that have been cooped up, space krakens... Transfer any crew between vessels near Kerbin. We just did that around the moon. Are you sure we need to do that around Kerbin now? Like, really? This is the main mission? I do have to say, I am a bit disappointed about that one. Um, well, all these others are side missions, so this does seem to be our current main mission to take care of. Which is like super low payout, there's no new signs and nothing attached to it, I mean it's like, hmm. Okay, well I guess we take that one, I suppose we're going to take care of it rather quickly. You know, basic setup, basic stuff, nothing too crazy and then we'll go from there. A different topic to maybe think about today is that we are at 1.4 million bucks, which is honestly not the worst amount of money we've ever seen so maybe it makes sense to also upgrade some of our facilities around here so let's maybe quickly go and explore around what we have first things first R&D we don't really have anything right here um, higher science level and surface samples I mean surface samples would be quite nice um, the trains already a bit past there unfortunately for the moon for the time being but um, you know it's nice and resource transfer available I guess is in regards to that. Now the interesting point is that we're technically all set 400 signs and it did say a signs limit of 500 so we don't really have that much breathing space right there but I think we will keep all research to the next mission then because the current one is really frankly quite so trivial that we don't really need much of any uh well much of any booster in terms of uh any technologies. I think we can do it with what we have. Um, administration building, I guess we're not too interested in upgrading. We would have the astronaut complex and more Kerbal Nauts, uh, which Kerbals on EVA can place flanks. Were we not able to the last time? Kerbals can perform EVAs. Oh, wait, this is the current state. Oh, right. So this would just, okay, we can already collect surface. Did we not collect a surface sample? Did we maybe collect one? I've got no clue. But the only thing that this changes is an unlimited research science limit. Okay. So here, more active Kerbals, and that's pretty much it. Not all too interesting. Max DSN power. Is this like the array that we've got going here? Unknown object tracking. Oh, is this like for asteroids and stuff? And the maneuver tool, which could be handy, most definitely. 
This thing we've got fully upgraded here. We could up our max supported parts, which would be cool. And then we do also have mission control, which is more contracts, basically. So, I mean, basically, I think it's between these two here. The question is, really, what are we going to need? Let's maybe also do that based on what we need next mission. Maybe if it's Minimus, we need some big craft and the... Uh, well, hangar makes more sense if it isn't, and we need to do some drone that goes further away, you know, maybe the tracking station makes more sense. So, we'll do it based on that. Now, in terms of this very mission, though, the question, I guess, being, how far do we really need to go for this? I don't think all too far. We literally just, let me double check the contract, maybe, but as far as I understood, we literally just need to, abs yeah. We, we literally just need to uh, get orbit going in near Kerbal or well, near Kerbal orbit, I guess. Well, low Kerbal orbit is what we need to get going, and then we get two vehicles together, transfer the crew, and we're happy ever after. So the question, I guess, becomes how do we design that vehicle? And I'm kind of tempted to just, no, not go with our Moon of Magic Mark III, but to go of like the Mark II and do like basic design off of that, the question really being... Maybe we just do a design from scratch, to be honest. So let's go do that. So we're going to need a Mark II command pod because we do need at the very least two seats, right? We will go and go to utility. Spotlight would be useful, but we don't need that too much, to be honest. Um, we will want a parachute. It's actually new stuff, isn't it? Maneuvering lights and stuff. Haven't seen that before. Star Shot 32. Jebediah Kerbin now eats danger for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. His job as the key to do, 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 do fireworks canisters. Large firework launcher. If this one goes off at the wrong time, you may be looking for more than just a re What does a firework launcher do in this game? That is awesome. I need that in my life. <laughs> okay, cool. But what we do actually want, we're not even going to put any like science -y stuff on here because we're not going to be able to gain any on top science that we didn't have before, to be honest. It's all in near Kerbal orbit and everything, so it doesn't make sense. We are going to put a heat shield on. We've all learned that that is a very essential step that you do not want to be missing out on. And then we are going to go and get a stack separator. Because we've all learned that stack separators actually, um, well, separate themselves from the craft as well. And don't just separate what's below it, which is you know, usually quite useful if you do want to make sure that they don't explode on the heat shield that you place them on. Then we're going to go into fuel tanks, and we're going to go and build a little bit of a proper-ish rocket. Now the question once more becomes, ooh, look at that. We actually do have a fuel tank that does match the rocket size. Who would have thought? I had no idea, to be honest. Uh, that is the wrong one. That is also the wrong one. Which did I just pick? This one here. Yes. So we're going to go and actually extend this thing up a little bit, and I think that is totally more than fine. We really don't need to make this all too complicated. Uh, in terms of these, we've got ASL Vac Thrust. Yeah, but where was the efficiency here? Right click. So ISP 29310 to 8320 in vacuum. I mean, these are quite beefy, to be honest, but, you know. I don't really think that we need more than one stage if the boosters, if the solid fuel boosters, is like potent enough. Uh, what I do think though is that maybe we do want to make that stage a little longer. I also don't really want to get at the end of the day into a situation where, you know, we... would this have worked? No. Um, I don't want to get into the situation at the end of the day that we that could have gotten it right and then we don't quite make it and we're all annoyed. So this is not good for inside atmospheric flight. These are two quite competitive. This one does have a lot more thrust in general. It's a teeny tiny bit less efficient in... I think this one's the way to go. Uh, weird sizing. Doesn't really fit. But these were the smaller ones, right? Yeah. Do we not have like a mid-size that fits these tanks? I guess not. 
Well, you know, if it works, it works. It's fine. So, uh, what we do need, what we do kind of really need, is going to be some sort of uh, ASAS. You know, that would be helpful for a start in terms of manoeuvring. Or, well, I mean, a combination, I guess, of our ASAS and some RCS. Oh, boy. Um, given the size, I guess we do like two inline reaction wheels instead, which I guess is cheaper. Uh, we will go... What is the difference between these? I have never ever in my life before seen two different RCS blocks. Oh, the one is stronger and the other is weaker. Is that pretty much it? I guess this one's also smaller, right? Oh, that's interesting. I've never seen that before. Uh, but we're going to go and throw some of these on. Just to make sure. And a little snap toggles. Uh, just to make sure that we do have some decent maneuverability in space. That is the wrong ones. Got to make sure they're equally strong, ideally. So something along those lines. And then we do probably want to make sure that we do have some level of RCS fuel. Ideally, you know, like an inline tank for once. No, 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 drain valve, fuel, 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 fuel. Okay, I guess, I guess no inline. That's fine. We can do it like this. Uh, the doors are right here, so, you know, maybe we place it on the rocket, actually, to make sure that nothing explodes in our face when we go and re-enter the atmosphere, right? You know, you don't probably want monopropellant fuel exploding in your face when you enter the atmosphere again. So that's that, and then we can go get some radial decoppers on that. We're going to go pick the bigger ones, so that's going to, you know, nicely boost things off, and we're going to go and get some decent, big size solid fuel boosters, because that's at the end, I think, the main thing that's going to properly go and catapult us into the air. Oh my god, that thing's huge. I... Uh, guess we could also get these little smaller ones. 2,578 meters a second. I mean, you think you go speed needed. Yeah, it's probably a bit much. Okay, let's go and balance that out a bit more. So we're going to go and put a bit more liquid fuel on instead. And... Then... Oh, wait, we have even bigger tanks. What in the world? How did I not know that? I don't even know where all these tanks are coming from or why I've always built my uh, rocket in a different way somehow in the past, but it's fine. We're going to do that, which is... Oh, wait a second. We don't need that much. We actually do have 3,800 meters a second in that stage after separation. Look at this. 3,300 meters a second in that stage after separation of the solid fuel boosters, which is really quite a lot. We're going to go pick these smaller solid fuel boosters, though. And then we're going to go move the whole stack downwards a bit. That's to, you know, still be able to see the actual main pod and everything. So that's 1,800 meters a second on those for starters. And then we get another 3.3k out of the main stage, which I, which I think in my book should be enough to catapult us into orbit. would also always be awesome to have the actual figures on this kind of stuff. But, you know, good thing that I don't. So it's just going to be trial and error. Gonna go put some pods on that for aerodynamic efficiency, which I guess aerodynamic efficiency the game really doesn't care about because we just lost some delta V, but it's gotta look fancy at the end of the day, so we're gonna do it like that. And then we go and actually get some structural stuff going, you know, struts and more struts and more struts, as you always want in Queerable Space Program, unless you want the Kraken to wiggle your rocket apart, which we're not aiming here, uh, aiming for here, so we are going to go and do it the safe way. Then on top of that, we do want some sort of winglets here to help us control the rocket a bit. And we're going to go and actually get a set of winglets on the inside onto the main stage so we can retain some maneuverability when the solid fuel boosters are gone. And we will also put some on the outside to add on some maneuverability when we do have the solid fuel boosters on so we can also get some stability when we do a bit of that early shape in turn. Mm -hmm for the orbit. That is that. So, main stage, RCS. We do have some solid fuel boosters. We've got some decent amounts of speed. What we do need to do is actually take care of the staging. So, um, this is all quite good, I guess. Actually not. We probably want to ignite the main engine with the solid fuel boosters in one stage. 
And... Yeah, that's that. Cool. So, let me look through all the parts real quick, because I do want to make sure that we have enough of everything, and we don't, in fact. Well, the one thing that we are missing is some means of providing power to the rocket while in space. So, let's go to electrics. And we're going to go and grab, first things first, a uh, few batteries. Uh, not too many. I think three should be sufficient. Just going to slap them around there, and then we're going to go and actually get, like, maybe two photovoltaic panels going just to make sure that there is going to be some solar energy coming in and we're going to be good while we are in orbit from a power standpoint otherwise looking through all this we've got robotics which we don't need coupling we are good on payload we don't need to bring we've got the aerodynamics figured out we don't need landing gear at least hopefully <laughs> um we don't need any of this. We do have a heat shield on, so that's beautiful. Electrics are taken care of. We don't need an antenna because we're not working with a drone. Or looking to commute uh, or looking to move much of any science over via the antenna. We do not need any sort of scientific devices. We do not need to be looking at bringing any cargo with us. And in terms of utility. You know, a launch escape system would be beautiful, but we've got a flipping parachute sitting on there, so if something goes wrong, the Kerbal Nords are going to go screaming in flames, and there's nothing going to be saving them from impeding doom. Unfortunately, the way it works, I guess. I mean, you know, you could technically put, like, the radio mantra extras on, but eh. <laughs> Where would be the fun of that? No, but that said, I think that is totally fine. That is everything we needed. Um, oh, what do we call this thing now? Uh... What could go wrong? No, I think we already had a mission called that, right? And still scattered around the entire universe, going away at like 3 million meters a second into the abyss, <laughs> as far as I can remember. So maybe not the ideal name right there. Um, I don't know. Curb and go boom. Hopefully not, but you know. We'll just call it that, and we will go and save it like that. So, double checking that we've actually got it here. Curb and go boom. There it is. So that is then a little basic orbiter. Probably if we ever get back to this and we need one of these again, we'll never ever find out because I just named it some random name and we won't have any clue what it was meant for. But for the time being, you know, that is that. The one question being, we do have the launch stability enhancers. So those we definitely want, I would say. We can go spread them nicely around the rocker. Save like that once more. Oh, that's beautiful. We'll, we'll go to the regular launch pad. And I think that for a crew, we will, for the start, start out without Bill. Just to make sure, you know, that we already have got a command pot with an empty seat going up. Because, you know, as you know, we do need to transfer crew in uh, Kerbal Orbit. And uh, then on the next one, you know, we can just go with two. Just, you know, a little bit of a safety measure for myself, I guess, that I don't forget it on the next run. That said, that is pretty much it. So it's already time to go for launch. I was honestly hoping for a more complex mission that would take us longer, but I guess this way within an episode we can just quickly finish off vehicle design, going onto the launch pad and getting this thing started right away. So, you know, that works for me. You know, should be fun as well. And hopefully we'll get a little bit more of a complex one the next time around. And that said, there is an important thing that we need to do, which is moving these structural connectors up to a separate stage so that we can first ignite the engines and then get rid of these and not just do everything at once and fall down first and then lose stability and then actually boost up and then the rocket tumbles and everything. You know, that's usually not the greatest idea in the world. So, you know, we'll do that. For starters, we will throttle the rocket up to max speed. I think that will pretty quickly just go down to pretty much zero because those solar fuel boosts are going to kick like no tomorrow. And then we are going to go and swap over to the actual main engine as we get higher up in the atmosphere. With that out of the way, though, let's go for a first test flight. Hopefully not explode. Fingers crossed. And we'll get going in three, two, one. Engine ignition. Get rid of those. Ooh, my God, this thing's fast. And we will entirely get rid of the main engine and literally just let the solid fuel boosters carry us up because, Jesus Christ, are we already going fast? And with teeny tiny taps off the D button, I will just slowly, very slightly force that rocket over to the right. 
trying to not make it tumble along the way. Uh, you can already see all the air pressure and everything building up because we're going so fast. That is 340, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 400 meters a second already. About to break through the sound barrier here at 8,000 meters. Not even remotely using the main engine. Isn't that insane? We do kind of need to go harder to the right, but I do really not want to make the rockets tumble, which is why I'm very careful. I will slightly get that main engine going just so we're ready for the separation of the solid fuel boosters. Now it's about time to stop turning for a quick second, thrust up that main engine. There go the solid fuel boosters. We will wait till they pass and then we will go and actually thrust up the main engine further. Get that rocket tilted over, ideally all the way now. And we do already have an orbit marker going. Where are we at? Is the crucial question. A hundred thousand meters already. Absolute insanity. Those solid fuel boosters are really kicking. You can see just how far we are already away from Kerbal Space Center. And really, I mean, I did not manage to even get half the way to as far as I wanted to turn in there. I'm always a bit hesitant now not to turn in too much when only going on solid fuel boosters because honestly they're just so so strong but at the same time we don't get any engine steering so if we overturn and the whole thing just tumbles you know you can't save it so given that that's happened to us quite a few wilds well quite a few times rather now I'm always very very hesitant on that I do have to admit so you know, that's at the end of the day the reason, I guess, that we are in a bit of a weird orbital shape. But as inefficient as that is, as you can see, I mean, we can somewhat easily rectify it, I would say, and just go ahead and go ahead and plan a nice uh, insertion burn maneuver. We will go and align to that with a little bit of RCS help. Should make things a little quicker for us did bring those monopropellant tanks for a reason after all and then we've got a burn time of 53 seconds which means we will get going at about 26 and a half seconds so let me go and slightly time warp here as Jebediah is just happy and amazed at being back in space and we almost missed our burn marker there but we're all good going full thrust ahead getting that orbit going for ourselves and this will take a second despite the huge engine said you can see just how much delta v we've got remaining so overall we should hopefully be fine getting the Kerbal Nauts back into Kerbal Atmosphere shouldn't be a huge effort so we won't need much of any delta v for that it's literally just about closing in that orbit now then having the delta v left in order to get those two rockets close together for a quick little uh, transition of one Kerbal Nought from one rocket to the other and then we can already also pretty much get the max out you can see just how much we have in delta v 2500 meters a second still remaining and i mean we're not even gonna go down below 2000 before we've got an orbit closed around curb and so i would say that is great great news we will slow the thing down here and just do a little bit of a granular burn now the one disadvantage i guess with such a huge engine is that you can't really that easily make small burns in order to do granular adjustments but at the end of the day worst case we do have that rcs to help us out so i think it should be quite fine that said we can now get rid of that maneuver node i've got a beautiful orbit going a little bit skewed i have to say around kerbin 107k here 95k there and also not quite perfectly straight unfortunately but for the time being I would say that shall suffice. It's uh, decent enough. We've got tons of Delta V left anyways. So the next task is to get a second rocket underway uh, with our second pilot and with Bill. And then we will go and get them both caught up in orbit. And we will go and make sure to transfer one of our Kerbal Nords, get them back down. And then we're pretty much already done with that task. And can you move on to the next one, which will hopefully finally bring us to Minmus or some other cool place. So I'm really, really itching to go there, finally. So very much looking forward to that. But for today, I'm going to end it off right here because we're already out of time for the episode. Next time around, we'll launch the second uh, rocket into orbit. We'll get the two Kerbals transferred and we will get everyone back home, hopefully safely. And then we'll go from there. So very much looking forward to that for today, though. I hope you all enjoyed this very episode. As usual, 
If you did, please make sure to smash that like button right down below for the YouTube algorithm. And if you're new around here and haven't done so just yet, also please consider subscribing right down below, as well as hitting that bell icon in order to stay up to date on all the future upcoming episodes. But with all that out of the way then, as usual everybody, thank you so much for watching, and I hope I will catch you in the next episode very, very soon. Ciao.